Okay, all right. So, um, today we are going to to see uh, how you can work with the Google Sheets. And as we know, each week we have a newcomers, and for this week we have some newcomers. So. I know some of you know already how to use Google Sheets, but today we're gonna see again how to use Google Sheets so that everybody can be able to do uh, this week challenge. So uh, what are we going to see? Uh, we'll see a brief introduction, and uh, we'll see a formula and function, then charts and graph for visualization, and of course, we'll hear some, we we'll do some practice, some handsome practice, and we we'll end with some question and answer. So that will be the outline. And uh, actually, I'm full, I'm in the full screen. So if there is a question, I just open your microphone and so that I can know that you have a question because I can't see any of your reaction right now. Okay, I think uh, we are online on that. Uh, we can continue. All right, so um, for the introduction of Google Sheets, what can we know about Google Sheets? First of all, let us, uh, let, let me ask you, you if there is somebody who does not know what Google Sheet is or have never worked with the Google Sheet. Is there anyone who does not have any experience with Google Sheet? Okay. <clears throat> I guess that uh, everybody has an experience with the Google Sheet. If yes, show me some reaction. Okay, all right. So um, we are not going to waste a lot of time. <laughs> we will go fast. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, uh, Google Sheet is a, it is an uh, online platform uh, that allows us to create and edit and share the spreadsheet in real time. I know you guys know already what Excel means, and Google Sheet is like a Excel of micro of Microsoft, but this time this one is for google and it works online and the the benefit the advantage of google sheet is you can work on a team so you and Nike can work in the same sheet online at a, at a, a in the real time and uh we can it can help us to to do our tasks to split our tasks and do our tasks very fast. So now, why do we want to use Google Sheet? Um, some of the reasons are because it is free and we don't need to pay anything to have it, to have access to, to it. The only thing you need, you need to know to have it is uh, your device with the internet. If you have your device with the internet, then you can have access to Google Sheet, you can work with that. But you know, with Microsoft, for instance, you need to prepare to have access to Microsoft services. So, how to access Google Sheet? Uh, to have access to Google Sheet, you just need to go to your drive and click on new Google Sheet. And you can choose a blank spreadsheet or you can use it, a template based on your your feeling and it is also easy to navigate in. So this is what we can see in in brief 
about Google Sheets. Now, when it comes to the formula and the function, let us uh, know that Google Sheets has cells, and in those cells, we can type and work in those cells. It's not, it's not like a, a, a standard sheet like Doc Sheet where you can write anywhere. No, here you have different sheet and different cell. Sorry, you have different cell and different cell has a, a location. So, and <clears throat> for instance, when we for for the first cell, it will it will be named AI A one for instance, like uh, like here A one. So, what do we mean by formula? Formula often I use to perform mathematical. <laughs> sorry, I use to perform mathematical calculation because in Google Sheet we are going to use manipulate data. It's not just uh, somewhere where we we are going to write a report. No, it's not for reporting. Uh, Google Doc is better for reporting. But when it's come to Google Sheet, is for data analysis, uh, analysis or data manipulation and those stuff related to data. Okay, so that is why the formula will be will be used to perform mathematical calculation. And often, not, not even often, always we will start uh, the formula using a an equal sign like this one yeah. before typing any formula or any operation you need to type out equal and you will use arithmetic operation to to write the formula that we want for instance if you want to do a multiplication you need to type maybe uh two multiply by what you want to multiply to maybe it is two and uh, as we are dealing with the cells in a google sheet we can use also the different cells we're gonna see those things in in the hands-on practice very soon okay what is we we know what formula is what do we mean by a function function is uh, <clears throat> basically uh it is a kind of uh, uh, a set of code that we write and that receiver an argument and return an output so we give an input and then it return an output so for instance we have uh, some average count count a count if count ifs and for instance, for the sum, it will add the value that you provide to, to it as an argument. And uh, for average, for instance, it will calculate the means for count, it will count a, a numerical value that you provide to it. For instance, in, if you have a given column, and for this given column, you have uh, maybe uh, five, five rows, in that column and in that single column when you you will give to count uh, count a for instance that the whole column it will return to you the all non empty cells in this case if all the 10 10 rows are non empty it will return to you 10 so that that's the way the function works basically they receive an input and they return an output based on uh, the way they are structured the way they are they are made to to work so uh last thing you're gonna see in this uh, page in this slide is a uh, cell reference you have two type of reference 
we have a relative reference and we have absolute reference. You know, sometimes when you want to work in Google Sheet, uh, after writing a formula, and you you know that this formula this formula will be applied for several several rows or maybe several <clears throat> columns, you need to drag, click on the formula and job and drag the formula okay maybe it will be a uh, side word or uh, up down uh down up a uh, sorry upward or uh, down up okay based on the sense in which the, the, the based on the direction you want to to um to to move your formula to so to be able to do that, it's better to use a, um, the dollar sign to make sure that our formula has uh, an absolute reference, not a relative reference. Because if you keep like that, for instance, A1, when you, you, you drag your formula, it will change and it will change it in A2, A3, a4 and so forth and so on. But if you use the absolute reference, it will keep it A1 for you. So you're gonna see those things also in the in the practice session very soon. Now, when you want to to see to see more what your data look like, uh, if you want to understand better your data through visualization, you use a chart and a graph. So in Google Sheets, when you want to create a graph, you just need to click on insert. You click on data first, okay? After that, you click on insert, and it will show you uh, many options. In those options, we have charts, and you will click on that chart. After that, you can customize uh, your Chart based on your 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 feeling, your need, and uh, and 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 so on. Now, make sure that the chart you are using is very related to what you are looking for. For instance, when you you want to uh, to see uh, different uh, the 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 percentage of your performance and it's better to use a pie chart rather than a scatter chart so uh, those are the charts some the common charts you use often you have bar chart pie chart line chart scatter chart and sketch chart a sketch bar chart uh, what each of them means we're gonna see them very soon the bar chart for instance will display <clears throat> your data uh, in 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 a rectangular bar so and each data the the height of each rectangle will be the length will be the value of the data you have in your spreadsheet and when do you do we use that one you use that one to compare different category or group for instance when it's come to pie chart, for instance, uh, it will represent your data in terms of circular format. And uh, in that circle, it will divide. Uh, if maybe you have you have a different categories, it will, di it will divide the different category uh, in, uh, in using a different color and with a, a given percentage so that the this what the pie, the pie chart does and often it will it will it will be used to show the composition of the whole as i was saying earlier uh if for instance you have maybe uh your, your market share and uh, you want to see the composition of your market share in terms of percentage better to use 
pie chart. We have also scatter plot. And for the scatter plot, it uses dot to represent value for two different numerical numeric variable. Mm -hmm. So here um, is work for numerical numeric variable. So what it does, it will represent the different the, the two variables, it will represent them with one dot. Uh, one, uh, you know, when you are in two dimension, you have uh, an you have an S access and you have a Y access. So it will use both to represent your your data in with a point. And the what? Uh, when do you want to use this kind of a, uh, a plot? You use the, this kind of charts when you want to see the relationship between our two variables, for instance. If they are related, if they are uh, correlated in negative way or in positive way. And uh, you have also a line chart. For the line chart, it will display <laughs> Sorry, it will display information as a series of data points called marker, and that will be connected by straight line segment. Use case, you know, they will. Uh, they are perfect for showing a trend over time. Okay, so when you want to see the the trend of your your data is better to use a line chart so it is often used for uh time series data i mean the data where uh when you have a date for instance you have something that is happening today tomorrow uh then the, the the next coming days or uh, in the past if you have those kind of data and you want to see how the the behavior in the over time, you better to use a line chart. We have also the the skate bar chart. This it is similar to bar chart we have seen earlier, but the 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 difference is for this one. Uh, you you will have multiple data series on top of each other. So I will show you some example in the in the practice session so that you can have you can have a clear idea on how it is different from a skate uh, from a batcher. <clears throat> so it is useful for showing the total and the breakdown of category within the total. Okay. So this is what we can say briefly regarding the graph and charts in Google Sheets. So if there is a question, please. Uh, if there is a question, please uh, say it. If not, we can go and see the first session. OK, Carol. OK. okay. Thank you, Rudolf. Uh, so far, it is a good presentation. Uh, maybe my question is like, if you can go back to the slides, which has uh, scatter plot, like okay, maybe back to two or three. I mean, two or three slides back. Uh, regarding the correlation of two variables, like, you know. okay. Uh, uh let's see here. Yeah, here, here, yeah. No. Slide seven. I think it's slide seven. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I, I have one question here. Yeah. If, uh, yeah. Like you know, most of the time we use this uh scatter plot to uh, see the relation or the correlation between two variables and these plots are most of the time you know they fall on the first quadrant of x and y axis 
that in uh, in other way in the logic uh, the two variables have uh, positive relation if the value will be positive like it is most of the time between minus one and positive one so if it is greater than zero and uh, between zero and one it is positive uh, correlation for the two variables and when the uh, their value is you know between zero and minus one the, then the two variables will have negative uh, correlation and if the value is zero they don't have core i mean relation between those uh, variables my question is most of the time you know when we use it it falls on the first quadrant as i've said but in the first quadrant of x and y axis the two axes are positive the x axis and the y axis are positive so how or when we can say that the two variables are negative you know uh, most of the time it's convincing me this is the question okay good uh thank you for your question it is a very a good question you have asked so um it depends on the, the data you are manipulating for instance if you are in uh i don't know uh, in which area are you uh actually regarding my uh, background uh, just i have already uh, graduated with uh, leadership but okay. my first degree was in mathematics yeah maybe i okay. took some course on statistics that's why just i'm raising this question okay good good okay no problem okay the it depends on the data you are manipulating you are manipulating so if uh, your data uh, you are plotting a, uh, a positive values okay you will never see that uh, the, uh, the, the dot the dot or the your plotting will fall down in the second quarter as you were expected okay so if in your data maybe as a mathematician and uh, you you will use maybe general data because they want to show you in general how things works they can bring the data when uh, uh, in and in this data you will have some some of the values are negative okay and then when you plot your your data you can see that there are some negative values and those negative value maybe uh, for the two variable they have some relationship if they have some relationship then at that moment you will know that okay uh when you calculate the correlation it will fall down it will fall down between uh, uh as known it is between min minus one and one okay so if it is negative it is it means that the correlation is negative if it is positive the correlation is uh, positive so it depends on the data you are manipulating for instance in this we challenge you can, you can notice that the 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 data we have shared with you are uh, has a basically positive value you are i'm not sure that you can you can see that the the scatter plot will have some will fall down in the in the negative and in the negative y axis the y axis and uh x axis so this is what i can say regarding that question i don't know if you get my get my point how about others do you understand the, the question of charity do you understand my answer Because the question therapy has acts is very good question. Okay, good. Uh, I'm not seeing any reaction so far. Um, I can we go to the practice now? Okay, good. So. Uh, let us see some. Uh, okay. 
think. So let us assume that we have this data. Okay. Uh, we have a name, you have an age, you have a score, and have a status. So um, when we take a, a row, for instance, it will give you an information on Alice. Maybe Alice it is a student and her age is 23 year old and uh, her score is uh, 85 and the status is pass. Okay, so we have um, the same information for Bob up to Jody. So now we want to to understand what will happen with this data, and uh, maybe the first question that we are asked is to know if uh, what's the number of students we have. Okay, and uh, for that question to answer to that question, we can use count. So because we have said earlier that count help us to to count the function count to help us to count the 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 number of uh, elements we have uh, in the given columns or uh, maybe a row based on what you want to do. Okay. So we want to know the number of students. What we can do is to is to type a count. Okay. Uh, let, let me do that again here. We will always start with the uh, equal sign, okay? Then we will tap the function count. And uh, when we start tapping, we will have a, a windows that will pop that will pop out. Then we can select the function that we want here count. I select it, and then when the parenthesis is open, I will come to the column of the of the name here, and then I will select what I want to count. Okay. When I select that one, I will close the parenthesis, and I click on. Uh, what's, 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 what's the one with this? Oh, okay, yeah. So it's no more that we have zero. Um, who can who who can tell me the reason why we have zero here? Let me see if can someone can tell me the reason why we have zero. Yeah, David. Because because, because the count function only counts numerical values. Exactly, thank you. So that is the reason why we got zero. Okay, now when we will use counter A, let us write count A, and we apply the same here now, the same data. Then we have 10. Okay, so uh, just know in your head that the count the count is used only for numeric variable and count a is used to counter a non-empty element so this is different between that is that one clear if you yeah, show me some reaction if not raise it yeah at this time yeah, uh, good, good afternoon. Thank you for the presentation. I, I, I still don't get that uh, count A and uh, count the, that we have zero. Please, can you recap and uh, maybe explain better for me? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Um, count, okay. Uh, you know, if, okay, we have a data, okay that see our data we have a name we have age we have score and have the status mm -hmm. now we want to 
to know the number of students that we have in this data. So we, need, we don't want to count ourselves by starting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But we want to use a formula that will help us to know the number of students we have in this data. Because sometimes this data is very small. Sometimes you have a huge data, so you can't start counting by manually yourself, okay? Then we can use, we have a choice between count, okay, count and count A. Now, the difference between count and count A is the count works for numerical a numeric variable. For instance, when we want to count the, the number of students that has age or score, we are going to use count count simple. But if you want to count the number of the student here, better to use count A. The count A count the count the cells that are non-empty. So if there is an empty in the cells, in it will not count down. For instance, let me uh, add the uh, Let us say that we, we add another student here. I will call that uh, John, okay? Let us say that we, we add John and John has uh, 30, 34 age and uh, his score is uh, um, 90 and John pass, okay? Do you see that here we have you have empty, all right? For this one, we have empty. Maybe you can say, yeah, we have a choice here also. We have uh, uh, 23, 18, and this one, eight. Okay. Now let us count this. If you count this, uh, I will use count eight equal count. We see we have 11, right? Yeah, yes. We have 11 because you, have, you see, it doesn't count these lines. It doesn't count these lines. Okay. Because here it is empty. This cell is empty. That's why it doesn't, it doesn't say that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I mean, this we have, uh, uh, we have 12 normally. We have 12 rows. But he gave us 11 because this one is empty. So the count A just counts the cells that, that are non empty. If the, cells are, if the cells are not empty, it will count them. If the cells are empty, it doesn't count. That's the difference between count A and count. Is that clear now? Okay, and why, why do we have zero in the first place? Uh, why you, uh, you asked a question then, and why do we have zero? Uh, oh, somebody okay. was able to ask answer, and uh, my network uh, failed. Okay, we have zero because <clears throat> this one works only for numeric variables. Okay, you, you don't use count when you have test uh, like this. Okay, use count when you have information like a two, three. If you have numeric variable, is where you use count. Okay. Yeah. For instance, if you want to count 
the okay let us ask ourselves how many students okay uh whose age are populated in this data for instance then we can use uh, let us say uh number of number of age number of age. Okay. In this case, we are going to use count. Then we are... then we have a ten. You see now? Yes. Okay. We have ten, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine ten. So here it doesn't count this one. Here it doesn't count this one. So that's the difference between count and count a. Yeah, thank you. You are welcome. Rudolf, can we continue? Or there is a other question? Yeah. Come a uh, Ahmed. Yeah, like uh i have uh, the same question uh okay. can you please show us like uh, by selecting the text sorry i joined now the, the text with the count function for the the count function works with the numeric values yeah but like can you like can we say like when you are selecting the text does that like does it give us zero like yeah see like, here if you don't mind can you repeat that step yeah okay so what um you see this is the count function okay and we apply that count function on name yeah from a1 to a11 from a8 from a2 to a11 yeah okay i mean we can even we can even say now to 11 um a 30 okay you can do like that also yeah like give us zero. zero yeah yeah because it, it works only for numeric variables okay thank you so much you're welcome um any other question if not i can continue with uh, another function okay good um so let us uh let us see what count if does so for when it comes to count if we want we want to count based on a condition so when it comes like that, when you in your data analysis, you come across to uh, a question when there is a condition and but you want to count, use count if. Now, when there is a, a multiple conditions, you will use a counter if with the X, okay? You're gonna see both. <coughs> So let us assume that uh, we want to see um, the students that pass, uh, uh, the number of students that passed or the number of students that failed, okay? Uh, number, number of, number of pass and number, of fail okay so what we need to do you is to use a count if count if when you use count if you will select the the status and and then you will write your condition here we want to see those who have the path 
So we'll use a path. And here, if you want to see the number of students that failed, you use the same count if you select the same data. You select the same data and you use uh, as condition of failed. Okay. Then if you really count, we, we notice that we have a for fail, we have one here, two here, three here, and four here. So the number of the number of students that failed in our data are four, and the number of students that passed in our data are eight. So this is how you use a count if. Is that one clear? Uh. Okay. Uh, so, so, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's clear, but I, I I noticed something there in the when you were selecting the student uh, pass, you use can't if uh, equal sign and can't if bracket. Then you put the cursor on the status and select the 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 data. And when you are talking about the one that failed, you you did not put the the uh, cursor on the status uh, is, it, is it that different there uh, what do you mean by status as in the status of the uh, past uh, field students on the oh, data I, on the I, I did it let me show you I did oh it. oh okay let me see let me all right okay you can you can see that here so i write equal i write count if i write I put the data. The data here is a it is D two to D thirteen, which is here. And now we put the condition uh, field. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we give us a, a four. So we have four students that failed in the data. That has a status field in the data. Okay. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Um, so we can continue with another formula, right? All right, good. Okay. So uh, as I was saying, we can use also count if when we want to count based on different conditions more than one condition okay maybe we want to see the student that that passed with the with the, the score under or above 80 okay you see that we have different score here right we have 85 90 78 now maybe we want to see we want to know how many students that passed with a, a score that that are inferior or that are less than 80. So for that, we will use count if. <clears throat> Let us see how we can do that. So um, let me, let me. Number of students that passed with a score with a score under eighty. Okay, this is what we want to see. So <clears throat> we use count if with the x. Because we, the the condition are more than one, so we can we select. Maybe we want can you change the eighty to eight? Maybe eight five. There is no all scores are below eighties failed, so you can't change the arbitrary example. 
even student that score 80 78 a yeah yeah there is no pass with this example okay okay good there's no problem uh we can we can we can use uh we can use 90. okay yeah it's better okay good so all we need to do is to always start with the equal sign and we will tap here count it with the x because we have uh, multiple conditions so we want the student to pass so we will use our first condition on status Oh, sorry. Um, so we, sel we select the data of status and we put our condition pass. And then we will select the the our second con our second data, which is the data of us because we want the score to be sorry yeah we want the score to be uh under under 90 all right then we have uh, two so let, let me revise again the the the, the formula so the problem the formula is saying we want the number because we are counting here we want the number of students that passed and uh, with a score less than 90 and when we 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 put that formula you return two students okay two students and you can check with uh we can check manually but when the data is uh, new, is very huge, you can you can't check manually. So you need to choose just uh, the formula. So so that's how count equal will be used. And those then they are not the only function we have. No, we are we are using those functions here because you guys are going to use them in your uh, in this week challenge. Those are the functions we will be using in this week challenge. That's why I'm I'm trying to show how they work. Okay. Is that clear for count if with X? Good. Uh, okay. All right. So let us see how we can use average and uh average if okay yeah there's a question can, can you hear my voice now yeah 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 we can hear voice yeah like uh, when you are uh, demonstrating the 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 count ifs with s you yes. you you said that like we can use that function for for analyzing a data with more than two two conditions for example on the first case you selected the rows that are related with uh, with their score and then you give it an argument uh, like to select uh, the the scores which are greater than 19 and you see you made a comma and then you selected the rows with the with the passed or failed uh, keywords and then you, you give the keyword with the with the past uh, keyword using in a quotation like i was wondering like uh, what can happen like is it a must to to make that to make that greater than 19 the numeric value in a, in a quotation like i have some like can you repeat the final step okay for sure for sure so uh let, let 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 me see let me reformulate your question you want to know uh 
whether those con uh, those those quotations make a difference. Okay. Um, let me see if I'll. Okay, let, let, let me go back here. So, you were talking about this this one, right? Yeah. Okay. The quotations. So, like, can we put only 90 without the quotation? 90? Yeah, like greater than 90. The quotations. Yeah, like, can, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use gr greater than 90. Without the quotations? Um, without the quotation, no. Yeah. Without the yeah. quotation, it, it won't work for you. But if you want to maybe if you want equal to 90, yeah. Okay, you can remove you can you can use the quotation or you can remove the quotation. Both will work. So let, me, the, okay. let, let, us, let, let us do that. Okay, maybe you want the student, the number of students that pass with a 90. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we have this one. One. Yeah. This guy, and we have this guy. Yeah, you two. see? Two. Now yeah. we can we can also remove the the quotation for that one, and it will work. Yeah, it is still working. Yeah, but it is better to use to be to use the quotation because <clears throat> you may you may be dealing with the other one like a pass uh, like character okay oh, like okay. with the test so better to to be familiar with the quotation yes yeah okay my, my question is that clear? Is, yeah it's really clear and uh, you answered my question okay, you know like I, I got it uh, confused like uh, you know like on for most of the numeric values, you know, some programming rules say that we don't need those quotations. Anyways, like you have answered question, my question. Thank you. We can proceed okay. now. Okay. Good. Uh, is there any other question? If not, we can continue. Okay. So we can continue with the. Uh, average so you know when you want to to see the mean of something we use average and basically the definition of average here will be for let's say if you want to see the average of the of the score of the score it means that we want to to sum all these scores and we want to divide them by uh, the number of students okay like uh, uh let me show that let me show that because i did it here uh, can you do that here <clears throat> so Let us say that we, we want, okay, P2 up to P11, okay. This one is the sum, okay. When we want to see the average, We use the sum, okay, and then we divide the sum by the number of the number the number of students, okay. So here the number of students here it will be if you want to to go faster you can use the count the count of I don't know really if I'm if you you are understanding what I'm doing now, or maybe I will. Uh, okay, let me let me let me do this. Okay, let me change it. Let me change it like this. 
to one C two to C and then we want the average. The average which is the mean. So it will be this one divided by this one. Okay. Now and so far is it good? I'm trying to define to to show you what average means before using the formula. Is it is it fine so far for the formula? Yeah, okay, good. So let us now use the form the formula. So if you want to have to use the formula and you don't want to to waste our time doing sum count after that, divide the sum by the count, we will use we will use directly average. So because uh, Google Sheet have provided average function to us, then we will select our function, our data C2 up to C13. Okay. Then we have the same, we have the same answer. So we don't need to do all the step I did here. We don't need to do that. We can do that right away using the the the, the formula. Let me let me write average with the with formula. So this is how we do that. Now let us imagine that we want the we want an average with the conditions. We want an average with conditions. This is where we will use uh, average if, okay? So uh, let us use maybe uh, we want we want to 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 we want the so uh, we want the average of the score uh, that are under or that are beyond eighty eight, okay? This will be our condition. Let us do that and see how it works. Is average with the average if. So we we'll use average if. We we'll select the data of our average, uh, the data of our, what we want to calculate the average for C2 up to C13, and then we'll, we'll add our condition. Our condition, maybe it will, uh, it will be here, uh, greater than 80, uh, that means 88, okay, greater than 88. Then it will provide us 94 which means that here, every score that are under 88 will not be considered in our calculation. So this one will not be included, this one also, this one also, because we say greater, we didn't say greater or equal to, uh, this won't be included, this also and this also so this is how we use uh, average uh, if but if you want i can do that manually for you but if you are, you understand how the concept we don't need to do that manually let me let me ask you again if you understand what i did sorry sorry i'm not seeing the screen again i don't know maybe it's, it's from my side or is general no no it's not no do you see the screen now no no not yet uh, maybe it is your it is your, from your side therapy casa mata you are you seeing my screen yes your screen is working in my side so Maybe yes, it's, it's visible. Yeah, it's working. Oh, okay. 
I just thought maybe, maybe I should, I, the maybe I should log week, out. May not be visible. Log in again. I've been doing that, and I can't. Oh, okay, good. So, so guys, uh, those are the uh, the function we want to to see in this tutorial because we are going to use them in the week in this week challenge. I think we have done with the with the function. Let us see the charts, the different charts. We might be using in this challenge doc, document. So the first one, when it comes to the chat, we have a, you have a, uh, you have a bar chart. Okay. So let us let us let us see how because we said that you use bar chart to represent our data in form of a rectangular, rectangular, so in form of rectangular, and then uh, the, high, the, the height of the rectangular will be the, the value of our data. Okay, so let us see uh, that one. You want to visualize uh, the score and uh, the the age, for instance. Okay, so how you do that? We select first of all our data, the one we want to visualize, and then we come here. Okay, in the toolbar, we click on uh, insert. Okay, we click on insert, and after click on insert. We come down and where it is written chart, we click on chart. Okay. Do you see? So we now we have the data. Now, when we have the data, in the right side, it will have the a windows that will help us to customize our data our will visualize the data so we want to use a chart bar we said so what we need to do is to change the type of the chart so i will click on this one and then uh i will look for chart bar but not uh this one i want to Okay, I want this one. Can you, can you, okay, good. Mm. Now we want, we, we want to, to populate both. So you have age here and how this for. This is what I want. So, can you see now? Here we have in blue, this is the legend. We have H in blue, we have the score in red. Okay. So, after choosing the type of, you choose the type of the, the chart you want here. Uh, you make sure that here are the the range of your data. Uh, we are using the range of our data is B1 to C13. Uh, B1 and uh, C13. Uh, excuse me for my pronunciation. Okay, so now when after after plotting your your chart like that, what you need to do is to to customize your chart by giving a title to your chart. So 
if you want to do that, you come to, you click on customize here. When you click on customize, you will see somewhere chart and assist a title. So you click on that one. When you click on that one, uh, it will, it will, it will, you will see somewhere title test. Actually, it is, it is written score. And you can see in the chart that you have score here. So what you need to do is you come here and uh, you can write uh, score, agent score, agent score. Okay. When you, you tap agent score, you have it like that. You can also format that one. You can use bold. Okay. And then it will change here like that. So you can come back. Or you can close it. Is that clear for a chart bar? Do you know how to plot it? Okay, good. Yes. Okay, good. So let us shift to another one. Um, Now the, what will be the second? Let us see how we, how we can use uh, stick, stick bar charts because the bar chart and bar chart are, are kind of similar, but, uh, but not totally, but let us see how to do that for the, the same data. Okay. So, our data is still selected, okay? But for this time, I want to, I want to use, uh, I want to add the name of the student to that. Okay? And I want to know for each student, I want to know for each student, okay, uh, the, the age and the score. So I, I will click on insert and then I will go to chart. Okay. You see, we have the, we have the score and in the top of the score, we have in, in the, in the top of the age we have the score the score in, is in the red and the age is in the blue so for each student we have the name in the x axis and uh, when we will go to the to the that windows it will written here stake a column chart but maybe as we did be as it was showing before it, it maybe it will do something different maybe it will, it, it will be a column chart like that but if you want to select thick chart make sure you come here when you, you put uh, it's written taking select standard when you select standard then it will show you it will change the type of the the chart it will which you, which you put it on take, take column charts. So this is how you, you will plot your maybe, take chart. Maybe in this regard, sorry. Yeah. Uh, just when you see, please let you back to the slide. Okay, in this regard, uh, yeah. just when you see the numbers in the Y axis, just the, Almost all of them, it is above 100. The score is between uh, uh, below less than 100. It is 80, 88, 90, like that ones. But the red one, the peak of the red one is just most of the red bar is uh, above 100. What does it mean? Is this correct? Okay. Um, what is happening here, okay, is it, this from from zero to to the blue 
I mean, the high of the blue. It is the age, yeah. It is the age plus the score of uh, Alice. Okay, he put the score of Alice on the top. So from the diagram, what do you think the score of this Alice? It shows above 100. Yeah, but the score of Alice, no, the score of Alice is not above 100. This is what I'm telling you. You, you see, it starts from here. It starts from something like a 20, 25. So the eggs are considered, I think. That's the reason, right? Yeah, it combines. Yes, it combines. It combines like them. The, That's why the yeah, result became above 100. Actually, it's not exactly. above 100. Yeah, exactly. Often, how do you use the? I mean, if you want to use uh, the, you use the stick when you have maybe multiple, okay, multiple uh, variables that we want to to see to visualize. Let me show you uh, a given example, okay, um, that I did. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Do you see here, for instance? Hmm? Yes. When you come when you come to that diagram, for okay, you have here the the the, the yellow is telling you block issue, the red is telling you unresolved issue, and the blue is telling you resolve issue. So when the, when they ask you maybe uh who has performed resolve issue basically you say that it is this one it is massive okay because the 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 result issue of massive is very high when they ask you maybe who has performed uh who has a, a, a most unresolved issue when you look at that you can say that it is also massive because when you see you see that the 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 red here is bigger than the this red is bigger than the other red it is the biggest red it is telling you right away the information that the the one who has the most unresolved issue it it is still this person so basically when they will ask you who has uh, the block issue it is this guy because see when we, we are you are looking at the the yellow one the biggest yellow one is this is this one so it is related to bill of partner so this is how you can read you can read the the stick by chart quickly so um it's not necessary to to see the 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 number the numbers to quantify not necessarily that this is the way we we can use it to to have the insane insight of our data so let us come back to our practice data so rudolph uh yeah like uh, don't you think that like uh, we don't have to use this stacked charters uh of often because you know like they look they they are a little bit confusing for stakeholders unless we are trying to show them the 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 difference in the values you know like when we are using the the stacked charters we don't have to focus on the numbers the numbers on the y-axis or on the side rather exactly. uh, like we have to look on the the like the yeah the length or the what do we call the amount the proportion i think that exactly. i think that that's the objective right yeah so like uh, i think like we don't have to use them for you know bivariant uh, situations bivariant values like like the one you did on the score and the age you know like when you uh, when you combine one over the other you know like it's it looks a little bit confusing so like unless we, uh, don't you think like we don't have to use it often often what's your idea here <laughs> yeah uh 
Thank you for your question. Uh, it makes me a little bit laugh. Uh, yeah. yeah, we we are showing you the different. Uh, maybe, okay. uh, maybe, so, mm -hmm. maybe my point is this chart can be a report. For example, as a, uh, one guy who are uh, reporting some data, your data. So for third party, uh, when you only report this chart or graphs, somebody should understand simply that's why i'm asking for example if you report both the data the statistical data and the graph or the chart anybody can understand simply even he can identify the quantity from the data but whenever only when you report the chart like this maybe some one cannot be understand what is the age of for example if you take bob how is his age and how is his uh, score like that one so either it i think we have to subtract each other maybe from the score we can subtract the age like that one so we should identify like that but it's even uh, difficult to identify in the report like this yeah thank you kasa for your for your comments for additional comments yeah and uh, I think it is uh, Akmel that asked the question. So, Akmel, we know that first of all, we are showing you the different type of chart, okay? And based on what you want to, to visualize, based on what you want to show, from your data, you will use the one that is as appropriate to your concern. And as a CASA has explained earlier, you can use the skate chart, the skate bar chart to everybody so that when they, they are seeing your, your skate bar chart, they can have a quick understanding, like uh, the, the example are. I have given earlier. So you don't need to be a statistician, or you don't need to know how to read properly the data with the quantities, with the values before knowing what is happening in the diagram. So you can, this is what I can say as an answer for your question. Okay, so we can continue with another chart. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was muted. I didn't know. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, I didn't know, guys. Sorry. Okay. So I was saying earlier that we are going to see the pie chart. And for the pie charts, I was looking which kind of data are we going to use. And finally, I decided that we will use this one. When uh, we, do you remember we have calculated the number of students that passed and the number of students that failed? Okay. You want you want to see, let us say that we want to see the proportion in terms of uh, and we want to see the proportion by visualizing that data. Okay. We can then we can use the pie, pie chart for instance. So we select our data, then we come to we select insert chart, and then we have pie chart that is there for us. So it is telling us right away that the number of students that failed are thirty three. 0.3% and the number of students that pass are CTC 0.77%. So this is what we can do with the, the pie chart. It gives us the percentage of, of uh, the data that we want to visualize. Okay. And you can choose also if you there is a, a other type of pie chart. This one, for instance, okay. So it is written. It is a 3D pie chart, but it is also pie chart. Okay, uh, I prefer the this one. Okay, then we and of course, uh, it's up to you when you you do that. It's up to you to customize your your graph the way you you want based on your feeling. Uh, is that one clear for pie chart? Can you can you can you use it? Because all of the all of those charts are, are asked to to be plotted in the challenge document. So better to know how to do that here, so that it will be easier for you to perform your task. Okay. Let us see the the scatter. Plots. Um, for the scatter plots, let us put this somewhere. Okay, here you want to see the scatter plots. You want to see the we we want to see the correlation between the age and the score. You want to see if. Our students are performing based on their age or what? So let us see the relationship between that one. So come to the chart. And then I will change the type. Okay, the scatter. Then I select the scatter. And uh, this is how we are. So we have the, we have the age here in the axis, and we have the score here. So we are seeing that our our points are in the first quadrant, like. Uh, Everything is positive here, nothing is negative. So the correlation, first of all, it is positive, okay? But uh, is it a strong correlation? No, because it's not linear. If it, if it was a, a strong correlation, it would be linear, like it would be linear, which means that we have uh, a line from zero, uh, that we pass uh, in the diagonal, then we will say that we have a, a strong correlation. But here we do not have necessarily a strong correlation because the we can see that uh, the age, uh, 
regardless of the age, the, the score is between 75 to 100. So people are not performing because, because of their age. Do you understand that analysis? Hello, guys. Are you there? Yes. OK. So uh, for the skit, the skit plot, the skit plot, ensure the relationship between two variables, especially numeric, numeric variable. So we want to see in, in our example if the, our, if there is a relationship between the age of the student and the score of the student. But what we are seeing, we are seeing that there is no strong relationship between them, actually. So uh, to answer the question of, I mean, to come back to what Casa was saying, uh, Kasa, if, for instance, in our data here, we have some, uh, for instance, in the, in the age and the score, we have some negative value. For sure, you will see that we will have, oh, we will have some, some dots in the, in this side, in the negative and the, in the negative access, and then we can talk about a negative correlation between our score and the age. Is that missing for you? Yeah, by the way, it was the Tarrafas question. Uh, ah, okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. Maybe Tarrafa okay. reflect on that one. Yeah, when it's positive, it's he says it is the first quadrant. Uh, second quadrant also it is negative. Fourth quadrant, I mean third quadrant, it is positive because negative, negative. And uh, fourth quadrant is negative because x is positive and y is negative. So maybe this uh, clarify Tarrafa, I think. Yeah. Tarrafa, are you there? Yeah, 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 I'm here. You're right. Okay. Yeah, if we can see the plots under the x-axis, that means on the fourth quadrant, we can say that these two variables have the negative uh, correlation. But now, in this case, of course, they have a positive correlation and they don't have a strong uh, correlation between the, the two variables because the slope starting from the origin to, uh, to, the, to the right side of x and y, in this case, they might have the strong correlation, but in this case, they have a positive, but they are not strong, strongly uh, correlated. But when we see the slope, if the slope is a negative, they may have you not know, the weak uh, relation correlation between the two variables. But in this case, they are neither weak correlated or nor positively, I mean, strongly correlated, but they have positive correlation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, too. So let, let, let us also see some changes, OK? Uh, I, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. OK, yes. good. So I made, I made some change in the data. Uh, of course, we know that uh, age, age cannot be negative. And uh, this, well, this code can be negative, OK? OK? So. Uh, I made, let, 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 let me, <laughs> okay. I've, I just wanted to show you how it may work. Uh, okay, let me put it that way. So you see, so we have different card, card joints now. And uh, we have, we have the, the, the zero acid is here. So we have if there is a point, okay, there's a point that falls here, okay. So this person is between 23 age, 22 and 24 age. This kid is 23, and he has 
a negative score. And this person with a 34 age has a negative score. So see if you have a strong, you have a huge data with the negative values like that, then we, it can show us the, the, the correlation, the way we were discussing before, if there is a, if the, the slope is a negative or positive. So this is what I wanted to, to show quickly. Then I can, I can change back to the normal one and uh, we can continue. So, so the, the last thing we're gonna see is uh, the, the line chart. Yes, Ahmed. Yeah, hello, Ahmed. What about now? Can you hear my voice? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, I have some concern here, like regarding to the the example you tried to show us by using negative values. But like in but in in the real world, most of the data sets are like you know like they don't include negative values. So like you know like uh, can this the quadrant concept tell us whether this uh, these two values are related or not uh, okay good uh, to summarize quickly what we are discussing so far to make it very clear first of all the, the scatter plot will show you the relationship if it is a strong relationship or uh, if it is a weak relationship between two numeric numeric variable okay so maybe you want to see if uh, the age of students increase if the score increase or decrease you want to see those kind of relationship okay so this is when you use the scatter plots now for the real world data open you won't see necessary negative values. And if you don't see negative values, don't worry. Based on what you have as output from your data, you will you can make your analysis. Okay? So yeah, maybe then, for this in this regard, the best example can be the profit and loss, maybe. Regarding yeah. the score, yeah, students score, maybe it may not be function. But as he said, can be function for profit and loss. Yeah, yeah. That's also a good example. Okay, good. So the last thing we're gonna see here. Sorry, this is uh, the the line chart. So. So for the line chart. Let us say that we want to see how how the A um, how the A So this is how we do for the, how we can plot a line chart. We just come here, we select our data first, we click on insert and chart, and then we come here to select the line chart, and we see how the data is. So based on that, we can make our interpretation and get inside from our Data. So this is how uh, we plot the different charts. So is there any question? I think we have seen and you have seen everything we, we, we discussed in the 
slide and uh, I think if there is no question and you guys you have understood everything, we can wrap up the session. But if not, you can ask your question so that we can talk about that. Yeah, Ahmed. Okay, uh, Rudolf, your presentation was really nice. And I have, I have understood so many things in this session. Uh, like you started with uh, the functions. You told us about average, uh, the count if, the count, uh, and finally showed us the different kinds of charts. But like, uh, even though we missed some parts, like, like I don't know, maybe you know, like I arrived late or like uh, I arrived late. Like, uh, have you shown us like what about the data cleaning? The data cleaning, like maybe was that the the part of this presentation? And my second question is, like I thought this this Google Sheet, Google Sheets uh, is uh, different than from the Microsoft Office Excel, but it's uh, I think most of it, even including the functions, are the same. But like, what's the my question is, what makes uh, Google Sheets better when we compare it? from the Microsoft's Excel? This is my question, Rudolf. Can you? OK. Uh, thank you for raising your question. First of all, when it comes to the data cleaning, yeah, we didn't talk about the data cleaning um, because we wanted to, the, as the title of the, the presentation is, the tutorial is working with the Google Sheets. So we wanted to see the the, the main points that we need to know about Google Sheets to work on Google Sheets. Now, when it comes to data cleaning, uh, yeah, it, I mean, you need to, I can give some busy explanation. First of all, you can, you can, first of all, identify the missing data in your data. And after missing your, the, uh, your, uh, the missing data. Now you can replace the missing, you can either um, remove them or you can replace them by the mean, the mean of the, if maybe it is a, like we see in our, our data earlier in this data, we have some missing value, okay? We have some missing value here, for instance, for Charlie, we don't know the age of Charlie. And if you want to fill that one, we can, use the average of the age, the mean of the age to replace her, to, to replace the empty age for Charlie. And then Charlie will have an age. And you can do that for the ad for Jody. Or if you want, we can remove maybe um we can remove basically this this a row and this row. So it depends on, you didn't talk about data cleaning, but I'm giving you how you can do a data cleaning uh, for this kind of uh, small data we have in front of, uh, using the practice. Okay. Practice. I, yeah. okay. No yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe to add here on the difference between Google Sheet and uh, normal Microsoft Excel. Yeah, Let me I'm add coming, something from okay. my experience. Uh, Google document and Google Sheet, most of the time we are using online working. For example, if there are three or four teams employed working some task, at the same time they make uh, online working. Uh, simply when you go Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word, simply you are working on Excel by yourself at your house without any interference or collaboration collaboration of somebody uh, just you will do by yourself offline at your house but this google sheet it uses three or four percent at the same time as the same uh, online progress they are working the same data uh, so it's important to use for this purpose because even we are using this uh, in our organizations Kasaba. So like Kasa, you are saying that the main difference is it gives us access for our 
data like from from wherever we are and like whenever we need it i think that's your point right yeah yeah google sheet yeah, uh, google sheet for example course. you are somewhere and i am here when we have when we have an assignment to do an excel or financial breakdown or statements you can open your computer and google sheet i will when you where you were and i will open the google sheet when i am here then we can edit the google the sheet the data or the statistics or the financial statements at the same time we can read each other like it is working online thank you Scott. that was a, a, a clear explanation yeah. okay okay uh something i can add quickly uh Ahmed, do you I'm have hearing, access yeah. to yeah do you have access to the challenge uh, to the read challenge documents yeah like i, I have seen it now but I, I got okay to. okay when you are you are you are in that document can yeah. you notice that in the top you you have many people at the same time sorry okay when you are in your google doc okay yeah because the challenge document for us is written in the google doc can you notice that at the same time you are in your document doc sometimes there are other people also in the same document sure sure you know like yeah that exactly was exactly this is what casa was explaining it was saying so for yeah. google sheet also you can be multiple you can be a team and be working on the same google sheet and you can collaborate time, yeah you can collaborate exactly and also it is free but you know microsoft is not free if you want to use the microsoft office you need to pay for that and it is it is offline you will use it as a as i explained so well, so yeah yeah, you're you're right. You know, like that's why recently my you know like my Microsoft Office suit is saying that you know, uh, purchase a new product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you right. There. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Okay. Is there any other question? If not, uh, show me some reaction and we we'll wrap up the session. Okay, it was a nice presentation. You're welcome. Okay, thank you guys for being and uh, by the, from the beginning. Uh, by the, the way, end. Rudolf, yeah. like, uh, you know, since I have like a tight schedule, you know, please, uh, I may not appear in the, in the meeting, you know, sometimes, you know, so, but like, I, I will try to, to submit my challenges on time. Okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah, you do that based on your your availability. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so when does we uh, like when are we going to know the results for the previous uh, assignments?